Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms coming at you from Take Aim Training and Range to bring you a little bit of bullpup awesomeness. I know you guys are uh, excited about that. We're going to be comparing today the tried and true, legendary, coming from Israel, IWI, Tavor, the X95 Tavor, versus the newer to the market, Springfield Armory Hellion, which of course isn't exactly the newest thing if you know what the VHS is, but it is something that's newer to America and the commercial market and something that has been taking the bullpup world by storm. But is it deserving of all of the love that it has been getting? We'll talk about that a little bit today. So first off, what's the difference between these two guns? Let's go ahead and start at the muzzle really quick because one thing you might notice is those aren't the traditional muzzle devices or the OEM muzzle devices that the guns come with. They are actually three-prong Surefire QD muzzle devices. Why? Because yes, we want to shoot these with the Surefire RC2 silencer and see which one of these is going to be a better suppressor host. Ow! That sucks! <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Both of these do come with flip-up iron sights out of the box, ready to go, easy enough. If you're looking for more in-depth detail about both of these, we've got videos covering both of these rifles individually already, so feel free to go take a look at those. This is gonna be a direct comparison between the two, as is, however. So the only thing that we've switched up or changed out of the box for these guns are the muzzle devices. They're also both running the exact same optic, just different colors, the Sig Romeo 8T little red dots, which are pretty cool. So let's start with the Tavor. One thing that's inherently cool about a bullpup is its ambidextrous design. Uh, well, when you think about its location of its controls and things like that, now all of them are a little bit different if you compare like the Desert Tech MDRX or the uh, Styrog and so on and so forth. There's a lot of them out there, the FS2000. They all have slightly different controls, but a lot are similar. On the Tavor, what you'll notice is magazine release on the right-hand side right here, your traditional mag release like all of us that use AR-15s know and love. Same thing on the left side, ambidextrous. The safety is in a very similar position as well. However, it's only on the left side, 90 degrees for fire, and then horizontal for safe. Easy enough, right? What about your actual bolt release, things like that? That's all right back here. Now, if I wanted to lock the bolt to the rear, I have to do some kind of funny stuff here, do that, push this, and now it locks. With a magazine inserted, and on that last round, it will lock back just like this, except the actual charging handle forward. And then this piece down here will be well, out, like you see. And I like that a lot. Large surface area, so that way whenever you grab your fresh mag and insert that in there, your thumb is already in a natural position to send that bolt home, which is nice and easy to do. So I'm a fan of that. Other than it being kind of funny to lock it to the rear, not that bag of, big of a deal, however. And yes, with some modification, uh, you can actually switch the extraction or the ejection side to be left or right, but obviously it comes from the right side. And that's something else I'm gonna test today as well. Which one of these is technically more ambi friendly if I wanted to switch to my non-dominant arm or non-dominant side and shoot? Again, because this is a bullpup in nature, which means that the chambering and the firing and the extracting of the firearm itself is taking place rearward of the fire control group or the trigger assembly, then you've got to think that extraction, if it's not being dropped right out the bottom, like uh, P90 is, then it's going to be shooting across your face. <laughs> So hopefully um, I'll just need to keep my mouth shut because I don't want to get a chipped tooth today from any of these guns. Hopefully that won't be a problem. I've got good dental coverage. Anyway, great. So that's it for the controls. You'll also notice that you do have a Picatinny rail running the length of the receiver or the top side of the Tavor. Great. And the trigger itself, We'll go ahead and show that off really quick. Bullpups are not known for fantastic triggers. So you'll see with the X95, we have a little bit of take up. I feel resistance, applying more pressure, more pressure, and then it finally drops. And then on the release, quite a bit of travel before you finally see it reset or hear it reset. All right. Cool, easy enough. And that's really the gist of it for the Tavor. You're probably looking too, what about attachment points? Underneath these rail covers, you have Picatinny, and there's a lot of aftermarket support for the Tavor, so if you wanted to get an extended rail, switch it to M-Lock, stuff like that, you do have that capability, but it is gonna take a little bit of modifying and adjusting. All right, easy enough. QD sling points as well uh, on the actual rifle also. 
Let's talk about the Springfield Armory Hellion. Kaya and Sarah and myself already did a pretty in-depth review on the Hellion, so if you want to see more specific information about this gun other than the brief overview I'm about to do, go check that video out. Anyway, right up front, you're going to notice adjustable gas system. It's very difficult to actually adjust the gas system and you have to do some modification to the Tavor to be able to do that. So if you do look, are looking for a suppressor host, might already have a winner right off the bat. But again, we'll try that and see here in just a little bit. Coming back again, we have iron sights on the top, just like what we do on the Tavor. Both of them are integrated and flush, so they're not sticking out or anything. Again, you'll see the same thing with the Tavor. All right, easy day there, cool. Continuing on, the Picatinny rail, you'll notice, is raised. Well, again, that's because this is truly an ambidextrous gun. You don't have to switch the charging handle from one side to the other. It reminds me a little bit of a HK G36. Maybe if, like, the G36 and the Devore got together and, you know, had a baby, this would be what they got, right? So you'll notice the G36 style charging handle, it'll flip from either left or right side and allow you to actuate the action. I am a big fan of that because, again, it's not inherent to one side or the other. So, sweet, all right? Let's talk about the grip really quick because that's something that's obviously different as well as we come a little bit further back on the gun. You'll notice the grip is more of a traditional AR style, which yes, you can use AR grips on this, and it has more of that traditional trigger guard compared to something that looks like, you know, a, <laughs> I don't know, kind of like a hilt or the, the, the hand guard on a sword, something like that that you have on the Tavor. Again, a personal preference there about what you would like. I do like the ability to switch this grip out to something a little bit more comfortable though. So another point for the Hellion in that case. The controls like the safety you're gonna notice are a little bit different. It's not that AR safety that we all know and it's easy to manipulate. This right here is very intentional. What I mean by that is, is whenever you go to flip this thing to either fire or safe, you're gonna know you're doing it because it's not that comfortable to do. <laughs> so it'll be one of those types of things. Granted, if I'm in a shooting position here, notice where my thumb is, drop, and I'm able to drop it just easy. If I come back to the other side, notice here, fire, safe, right? Again, it's if I'm just actuating on the right side, it's like that. If I'm actuating just on the left side, just like that. But it is ambidextrous, unlike the Tavor, okay? All right, coming back a little bit further now, uh, let's talk about the, the, the magazine well. Because one thing I, th I like a lot more over the Tavor, um, or I, I like more about the Tavor, is the magazine release. You have a little bit more room for error. It doesn't have to be so precise. If you notice, whenever I go to insert a magazine on this guy, you have to be exact. <laughs> because there is no margin for error there. Uh, it's not really flared. So you got to you got to be precise and in a combat situation which this is a combat gun designed or pretty much built after that vhs that i've already talked about no i'm not talking about your old recorder from back in the 90s i am talking about a corrosion military firearm i know you guys that have actually used this in combat i see you guys on texas plinking's video you're talking about it having served with this rifle is this much of an issue let me know for me we'll see when we start running some drills how about the mag release it's not up here like it is on the Tavor and where it is traditionally. Arguably, it's in a better position, right back here. Again, it's only one mag release. It's not two separate buttons on either side. It's a very subtle button right here, which again is very easy to actuate and allows you to grab the magazine if you want to actually retain it. Probably not a bad idea. However, one thing I like about the Tavors is I can just hit this, that drops, and simultaneously as that magazine is dropping free and I'm hitting the mag release with my index or my trigger finger, I can already be reaching and inserting my fresh mag. I have a feeling I'll probably be quicker with the Tavor, but another reason why I like the magazine placement on the Hellion is quite simply because gear. If you have this sung snug tied up to your body, even though it does have a raised, raised material around the mag release, you still run the risk, especially with it being a nice large surface area, which is typically a good thing. The con to that is if you're running a plate carrier, you've got this slung tight to the body, you have the, the opportunity, a larger opportunity to accidentally drop your mag. Over this, it's gonna be very difficult to accidentally actuate that mag release, okay? Just throwing that out there. As far as the bolt catch, bolt release goes, you don't really have a bolt catch. You've got a bolt release, which is right back here. 
it's it's fine. It's still in the same position that the Tavor's bolt release is, but I can actually use the bolt release as a bolt catch on the Tavor. On the Hellion, if I want to lock the bolt to the rear, I pretty much have to pull it back manually and then reach into the mag well and then push up on the actual bolt catch as if there was an empty magazine in there. So that's really the only way to lock the bolt to the rear on the Hellion, which to some that might be an issue, to some it might not. I prefer being able to manually or at least have an easier way to lock the bolt to the rear. But again, it's not that huge of a deal, but it's still a minor deal, all right? But if I wanna send the bolt home, insert fresh mag, again, right where my thumb is, push back and it goes. It's not as ergonomic to me. I typically like to actually insert and then come here and then push it like that instead of using my thumb because I'm really having to rotate my hand quite a bit. Again, personal preference, but let me know. Also, you'll notice right off the bat, there's no Picatinny on this gun. Uh, the handguard itself is M-lock, but that is thick polymer around there. So how useful will these M-lock positions be and where they're at? Not sure. Uh, we haven't tried any type of aftermarket attachments or anything like that. We're just keeping these guns as is for the moment. I'm sure we'll do some follow-ups and try to you know, pimp these guns out quite a bit, uh, even more than just adding a suppressor. But ultimately, both of them as it comes, pretty, pretty similar. However, when it comes to actually making the gun eject from the left-hand side is easier on the Hellion than it is the Tavor. Uh, we've talked about how to do that in the previous video when we covered the initial launch or when we initially got the Hellion, but ultimately it's just rotating a few parts and now all of a sudden you get that left-hand side extraction. Pretty exciting. Now let's go ahead and talk about the fun stuff and that's how these guns shoot with the same muzzle device. And one more really big thing about the Hellion is this is a very rare find if if you've ever seen it before in a bullpup and that's actually adjustable length of pool. This has an adjustable buttstock to it that's actually under spring tension. Notice where you get your cheek rest or your cheek placement. This stays the same but right back here you have this little button that you push and it adjusts in and out. So if you got, you know, Kaya arms and you're nice and long armed, you can have this thing running all the way out. If you're like me and you like the gun to be a little bit closer to center mass and you like uh, to be a little bit more compact, that's probably why I like my Mark 18 so much, then you can have it all the way collapsed in and run it nice and close to the body. All right, cool. I think I got everything there. Oh, yes. QD sling mounting positions also forward of the gun and to the rear right back here, okay? There you have it, Picatinny rail. I actually think it's it's about the same length as far as the rail goes as the Tavor, so you've got a lot of options there for optics, lasers, and lights, and all sorts of stuff uh, if you so choose to run that, okay? Now, again, downrange. Let's go shoot them and see how they compare that way. Yes, we're going to shoot them both unsuppressed and suppressed with the shorty RC2. Let's get to it. Let's just go ahead and run a magazine through each gun just to go ahead and get a fill for them and so I can see how they feel right off the bat in comparison to one another. Quick little mag dump out about it, all right? First up, the X95 Tavor. All right, not too bad. A little gassy, <laughs> just right from the beginning. Uh, it is, you know, I can, as I'm inhaling through my nose, I can smell whatever type of CLP or whatever is in there. It's not bad though. It's also utilizing the long stroke piston driven system, which again is very inherent to like the AK-47, which we all know and love, a very reliable design. How does it feel as far as a recoil impulse goes? Really good, it's nice and subtle. Again, with the bullpup, a lot of the weight is closer to the shooter anyway, so it's not like you're getting a little muzzle, muzzle rise as it is. Now let's go ahead and try the Hellion. Now it's time for the short stroke piston driven system, kind of like the HKG36 or the Sig Spear LT or the AR18 or the Spear LT or, and it keeps going. Let's go ahead and try this guy out and see how that feels nice. Feels good already. All right. Very similar recoil impulse, honestly. And it's also about the same amount of gas. Now you're probably wondering, Clint, you said it has an adjustable gas system. Yes, we are actually running it on the suppressed system 
Why? Because, well, we're gonna run it, run it suppressed anyway, and I really do wanna see what it feels like suppressed, and I'll probably put the unsuppressed position back on too, just to see if there's that much more noticeable kick. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and rotate this into the unsuppressed position, which is really easy to do. You'll notice it's already grooved for your gripping pleasure. Push down, rotate, and click. Now I am in, uh, in which I think means no suppressor? <laughs> or is that Croatian for unsuppressed or full, whatever. Anyway, let's shoot it now. There I am. I don't know if you guys noticed that, hunting for the mag release. Yeah. There's those American controls. Got one more mag here. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's go ahead and try it <laughs> with now uh, the unsuppressed position. All right, send the bolt home and let's see. Okay, I'm actually gonna try it now. Suppressed. It's really hard to tell the difference, I'll be honest. Uh, I feel like maybe it's just my mind is telling me that it feels softer while suppressed. Kaya, come try this real quick. I, I see you over there. I know you're I know you're I know you're curious. So right now it's in the suppressed position. All right. Go ahead and just Did you see that? You and I are both having a hard time over here. Oh. All right, shoot just five shots with it really quick. All right. So what is this now? It's suppressed? It's suppressed. So it should be more gases escaping the system. All right. So Okay, right. and then to shoot, there you go, push in and then just rotate. See? There and go. it should click, it should click yeah, in. Did it, it click? Did. All right, cool. I'm out. What do you think? I. How do you get the bag up? Oh, <laughs> That's right the here. tap right there. <laughs> All right, All right um, so did you notice a difference? I think, I, I couldn't. It's very minor. It Maybe ever so slightly it's pressed okay yeah that's, i don't know i can't tell man i think yeah. i'm making it up i don't know yeah all right well <laughs> well let's go ahead now what i want to do is go ahead and let's just run a couple of drills all right uh, Good, i'm game <laughs> all right kai is part of it now this is going to be a very simple drill one reload one i want to do it about three times okay so i mean by that logic we should only be going through six rounds so very easy we're going to have our human shot timer over there on the command of threat from a low ready come up one shot. You know what? I'm actually going to be aiming at the target. As soon as I hit your threat, one shot. Reload. Reload. So insert. So it'll lock back. Insert fresh mag. Bolt release. Same. One shot. And of course, I want to be accurate. And on that final shot, timer stops. And we'll see which ones we're quicker with. Let's do it. Cool. So starting off with the IWI Tavor, it's going to be really easy. I'm going to be aiming at the target on the command of threat. Pull the trigger. Hit the target. Reload. Engage the target one more time. See what the time is. Shooter is ready. Right. Time? 3.66. 3.66, all right. I feel like I could be a little bit quicker there. Again, getting used to the controls of a bullpup. Let's do it again, 3.66, time to beat. Right. Okay. 3.39. 3.39, and one more time for good measure. Okay. Three point two two. That was all right. So again, as you begin to tr practice and train a little bit more and familiarize yourself with your gear, again each time was a little bit quicker. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> each time was a little bit quicker. So I feel good about the Tavor. I'm gonna go ahead and load up the Hellion. Same drill. All right. Now the Hellion. I might give myself four tries on this one because the controls are vastly different. So let's just go ahead and run through it and see what happens here. Right. Yep. Okay, already I noticed myself wanting to, I, 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 I go, went into it knowing the controls were different. What was the time? 5.21. Woo, all right, we can make that better. 5.21. Let's speed that up. 3.22 is the time to beat. Okay. Right. Four point two eight. Four point two eight. All right. Again, I'm still hunting for the controls. It's amazing. Just adding a little bit of that stress, trying to beat yourself, causes that much mental block there. 
All right, let's give it maybe, maybe, maybe two more times depending on how this goes. You're right. Three point four five, three point two two was the Tavor. I feel like I, I feel like I'm starting to learn this a little bit more, and I feel like the rain's starting to get on me too. So I feel like camera's getting ready to start get wet. All right, one more time. All right. Three point six six. All right, three point four five was the best. It's starting to rain. We'll get right back. All right, guys, so the rain started, weather did not cooperate, so we had to take a step back. So we're gonna do it from here underneath the shed. But as Clint said, the show must go on. I'm gonna try the uh, one reload, one drill with the Tavor. And I'm not, and I'm not too familiar with bull pop design, so it's gonna be a good training for me. So let's do it. Hold on. So you're ready? Yep. Threat. Miss the second one. What was that? 4.23. 4.2, okay. Let me do it again. Ready? Threat. My hand slipped. This sucked. Just above the target. This was a little slower, I think. Let me do it again. 5.93. 5.9, okay. Do it again. Where's an empty mag? There's a bunch of them on the floor. Yep, I know. There's one right here. All right, let me do it again. So put the empty mag in here, one in the chamber. And let's do this one more time. Shooter ready? Yep. Threat. Damn it. Dude, my hand is slipping. 5.30. Yeah. So the, so the four second, your first one was actually the best. Yeah. I think you started getting in your head a little bit. No, I like, uh, just get a little slippery. I think I'm just kind of slipping my hand around just yeah. a little bit, but uh, not too bad. I'm actually happy with this because I'm not too familiar with bull pups. Let me try the Hellion or Hellion and see how I do with that. All right, guys, so I'm, I have got the Hellion in my hand and it's got a little bit different controls. So nothing happens over here like the Tavor. Everything happens back here. Let's see how it goes. All right, same drill. One, reload, one. All right. You ready? Yep. Threat. Totally different. Six. Totally different. 6.13. 6.1, okay, let's just drop that to four. Some Somewhere in the fours. Let's try that. This is loaded. All right. Put an unloaded one in here. One in the chamber, loaded mag over here. All right, let's try to bring that down to four. See if it's gonna happen. All right, ready? hold on. Ready? Threat. Come on, get in there. Where's my flared magwell? All right, let's do it again. 6.15. 6.1, all right, all right, okay. Not too bad. Grab this thing again. All right, empty mag. Again, I just gotta get used to pushing that bolt catch or bolt release, yeah. just pressing that, that trips me up. Getting the mag out, it's not too bad. It's just a bolt catch or bolt release. All right, I am ready to do this again. All right, you yep. ready? Yep. Threat. Come on. Damn it, that was in the five, wasn't it? 5.62. 5.6, I'm gonna do one more time, why not? Four, it's gonna be in the four. Last one. Dude, this flared magwell. Yeah. It needs a flared magwell. Yeah, All right. You ready? Let me see. This is yeah, this is good. All right. Threat. Four point five six. Four point five. All right, we got it in there. So, Clint, I don't know how you do it, man. This is a different world. <laughs> So, uh, but it's pretty good. I think I like the Tavor better when it comes to controls. Yeah. 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 So anyways, back to you, Clint. So now we're really gonna test something here and that's gonna be that gas and the blowback coming from a suppressed bullpup, starting with the Tavor. And I say we're really gonna test it because, well, remember how I said, let's see how comfortable these are to shoot 
from your non-dominant hand, again, the extraction is taking place right here. There's gonna be naturally more gas coming into this system, so let's see how it goes. <laughs> Just to make sure I don't have uh, any chipped teeth by the end of this. That's that's all, you know. All right, this ought to be fun. Let's do it. Coming on over to the left-hand side, and let's see what kind of gas we get back to the face here. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I'm holding my breath. It is very gassy <laughs> to a left-handed shooter. I can feel the carbon hitting my face. It's not very enjoyable, I will go ahead and say that. If you needed to shoot your non-dominant hand, that is just something. Yeah, not the most pleasurable shooting experience. That's a lot better. <laughs> but I can say it's gassy. Now this is a long stroke piston driven system as I've already mentioned. And with the shorty RC2, again, no adjustable gas system. It's coming back, it's getting into my face and everything. I, I feel like you could probably see like little black specks or something, I don't know. But yeah, it is uh, not the best to shoot suppressed. Also, there are things aftermarket you can buy or do to actually seal this up here for left-hand extraction to prevent any gases escaping from the system on the left-hand side of the Tavor if that's something you wanna do if you plan on shooting this suppressed as a right-handed shooter. So with that being said, how does the Hellion feel being a, in the right-hand configuration being shot as a lefty? Let's figure it out, but uh, I'm also just gonna go ahead and finish the mag out because I don't know, I guess I just hate myself. Yeah, my left eye is crying. All right, now that the can has cooled down a little bit, we've got it mounted to the Hellion, and I'm actually gonna start in the unsuppressed position to get as much gas back to the face as possible, suffering for your viewing pleasure. All right, so then, without further ado, let's go ahead and just see how this does. Yeah. Okay, also pretty gassy, all right? Nostrils are feeling it. Let's go ahead and move it into that suppressed position here. There we go, we are now suppressed. And let's see how we feel now. Woo! Oh, it hit me right in the chin. So the Tavor didn't hit me at all uh, with the extraction. And so it's funny because with there being more gas in the system, in the unsuppressed position, more gas being in the system, the non-adjustable gas system of the Devor, the rounds are extracting a little bit more forward. Now that there's less gas coming in, they're coming back a little bit closer to the shooter in this case. Let's just keep rolling with it. If I get, you know, if I get injured, it's gonna be cool. Let's do it. Ow! That sucks! <laughs> Yeah, it came back, hit me a couple times, and the rounds kind of fell, you know, right under the arm. A couple of good little burns there. I wasn't expecting to say this, but the Devor is actually, if I was, in, these, uh, in the unsuppressed position, uh, it is better when you're shooting it with a suppressor left-handed. <laughs> as a right-handed shooter. Uh, the Tavor, even though I'm getting more gas back to the face, I'm physically not in pain because of the shells hitting me in the chin and also, you know, hitting me in the arm and stuff like that, right? Again, is it that big of a deal? No, but if, my, if I was a mouth breather, I'd probably be swallowing some brass and that doesn't sound like a good day, especially when it's as hot as I just felt it. So keep that in mind. The controls and the ergonomics, they're not bad, but I do believe I prefer the Tavors. Um, at the end of it all though, I think that this gun is very freaking cool. There are a lot of things I like about it. I do in fact like the adjustable gas system. I do in fact like the ambi charging handle right underneath the actual Picatinny rail. I do like the mag release quite a bit. I do wish the magwell was more flared and wasn't such an exact entrance of the magazine that you need. The Hellion has a lot of potential but with that being said, I think I like the trigger better. I don't think I compared that before. Let's go ahead and show that off really quick. More of a flat face trigger. You'll see we have a little bit of take up, but very, very light. Slow, steady squeeze. A little mush, but not bad. Reset. Again, bull pups aren't known for fantastic triggers. That one's not bad. I think it's better than the Tavors, at least. 
in this case, all right? Uh, the safety position, not a huge fan of either, but ultimately, I really, really do like the gun. I know it seems like I'm bashing it a little bit, but uh, I actually really like this gun a lot. It does have a softer recoil impulse while suppressed. I do feel like the Tavor is a little bit more violent in that case, and yes, a little bit more gassy, but again, with an adjustable gas system, a little bit better. If I keep this just as it is and I shoot right-handed, it's very pleasurable. I will say that. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you think that it's enough to replace the Tavor as being the mainstream bullpup here in the United States? Or do you think this Croatian masterpiece is going to sweep them all? Let me know, guys. Again, here we are, thank you, with the Tavor and the Hellion. I don't know, the aftermarket support of the DeVore is also pretty nice, I will say that. Okay guys, we'll leave it off there. Don't forget to head on over to cfcontest.com to see what we've got going on there. Again, if you're new to the channel, you're not too sure what CF Contest is, I would 110% invite you to go and check that out. I would encourage you, implore you even, to go check that out. And as a staffing CEO in the Marine Corps, I can even say it would behoove you to go and check that out. For all my Marine buddies, I'm sure you're laughing at that now. Anyway, God bless you guys. I'll see you down in the comments section all about Hellion versus Tavor and which one you would choose. And we'll see you next time at Classic Firearms.